For this video, we are going to explore true cryptid encounters. Just like in my videos that look at paranormal events, I encourage any listener that has had similar experiences or that may know anything about these encounters to reach out to the original writers to share them together. Links to the stories will be in the description below in the order that they appeared. With that being said, on to the events as described by those that experienced them. So this happened years ago while I was still in high school. I'm now 23 and have never shared this story anywhere and only ever with a select few in person. I live in Missouri, just north of Kansas City. One night, my buddy and I snuck out of my parents' house to go smoke. There was a trail that was right by my house in a local elementary school. Never really seen anything out there outside of deer, foxes, coyotes, etc. But growing up, we heard from parents and other families that the woods nearby were haunted. The area we lived in was right near an old slave farm, and I never gave it much thought. Being a kid who, yes, believes in Bigfoot, but has never seen any true proof, so I'm still pretty skeptical of stories. Anyways, back to my story. After we snuck out, we made it to the trail. On one side of it, there was the backs of houses, and to the other side, woods. As we were walking down the trail, it felt like any other time we had done it. For the first three quarters of the trail, everything was fine, but as we came up to the final bend, my friend slapped my arm and pointed into the woods and asked if I had just seen that. I looked into the woods and saw nothing, so I blew it off and thought he was just out of it. So I kept walking like everything was fine while he still had his eyes glued to the woods. At the final stretch, about 50 yards, all canopied over, he slapped my arm again and stopped me, this time with force, so I looked over thinking it was still nothing. I saw a figure of something similar to a human shape, but standing about 8 feet high. The reason I saw it was because the trees by it were still shaking. At this point, I thought my mind was playing tricks on me, but I was scared nonetheless. I said that we should keep moving, and we did, but now I too had my eyes glued on whatever it was in the woods. We picked up our pace to a speed walk, and after about 10 steps or so, the thing started to move as well, but on a path that would put it on the trail in front of us before the end. At that point, we looked at each other and immediately started running, like running as fast as we could. We made it to the end of the trail and cut up through someone's yard and into the street. Once there, I looked back towards the trail and saw that figure standing on the edge of the trail. After that, we went back to my house and talked about what had just happened. As a couple of notes, there haven't been any bear sightings up by my area, but we have had some bobcats and cougars. Not sure what it was. I don't think it was Bigfoot, but if it was human, then it had to be some 8 foot tall guy in the woods behind my neighborhood at 2 a.m. I recently had a strange encounter with something in a storm drain and would like to see if you guys could help identify what it was. What happened? Okay, so I work at a movie theater, which means we closed the building down at about 1.30 or 2 a.m. So once the building was closed, a couple of co-workers and I decided to go to a hill across town that had a view of Nashville. We hiked up the hill, and once we got to the halfway point, they headed back to the car to drive up the hill faster, and I continued up alone. When I got to the top, a guy was hiding in a bush and shouted, What are you doing here? at me, and started to run after me. Now I know you are probably wondering where the creature comes in, and that is about to be revealed. So I ran down the opposite side of the hill towards a church and lost the guy tailing me. He went after my co-workers instead. As I was reaching the bottom of the hill, I found an open drainage pipe for the storm drains. It had bars covering the front at 1 foot 6 inches apart and decided to hide down there. I made a couple of turns and ended up about 3 or 4 streets from where I went in. The drain was about 5 feet high so I could move quickly with only a little bit of a hunch. I decided I was going to wait a little bit to make sure I was safe, so I took my phone out and started to scroll through social media. After about 15 minutes or so, I heard what sounded like a rock getting kicked down the tunnel coming from deeper in, so I turned my phone flashlight on to investigate and saw a pair of eyes reflecting back just on the edge of the light. 
The eyes were about six inches from the top of the tunnel. The rest of its body was in mostly darkness, but I could tell it was human shaped, but I wasn't sure if it was bending over like I was, or if it was a shorter creature with a big head. We stared at each other for what felt like a minute, and it started moving quickly toward me again. Once it started moving, I took off back the way I came and ran to the church where my friends were waiting for me, and we left pretty quickly after that. I haven't been back to that hill since, but my co-workers and I are planning all to go down the drain together on Halloween just to see what happens. Does anyone have an idea on what I saw in that tunnel? Now, this account is not my own, but was told to me by a marine doing combat tours in Afghanistan. For the sake of his own job and security clearance, he has asked that I not give any names and never mention what region they were operating in. From my understanding, the individuals who were with him during the encounter were from a task force operating under orders for the CIA. Beyond that, I was told next to nothing. I will refer to him as Sarge, if only to have a name. Anyways, here's the story. During a patrol checking on some local farmers, Sarge's unit was made aware of a deadly being living in a cave system near their farms. When pushed for more information, the locals were only willing to say that this being was stealing from their farms and had killed a few people who had made the mistake of trying to protect their livelihood from it. Convinced the locals were being harassed by a group of Taliban fighters, Half of Sarge's unit was sent out to investigate and either arrest or kill any hostile forces in the area. So with a few Humvees armed with M2 machine guns, they went out to the cave where the mysterious being supposedly lived. Upon arrival, they noticed nothing of interest. There were signs that something was living in the cave and the soldiers found animal bones scattered around the entry. Not wanting to risk his entire unit fighting in a cave that the enemy would know very well, Sarge sent his two fastest marines to investigate. The two men just gave the others a cocky grin and a thumbs up before disappearing into the darkness beyond the mouth of the cave. For ten minutes there was nothing. Not a single sound inside or outside the cave other than the idle chatter of bored marines. Then sound erupted from the cave, shouting and screaming. In a matter of seconds the two men emerged from the cave at a full run and zipped past their teammates, one of them shouting, RUN! Just run! But like the hard-ass special forces operators they were, the other soldiers stood their ground, only to see a massive man emerge from the cave. He stood nearly ten feet tall with leathery skin and red hair. In one of its massive hands was a log that it began waving at the soldiers in a very obviously threatening manner. Shocked but not panicked, Sarge commanded his men to shoot that motherfucker, and the twelve marines opened fire but the bullet seemed to be doing little more than pissing this giant off. Finally, in desperation, one of them fired a grenade launcher at the being, blowing out a massive chunk of its flesh, exposing a small portion of the ribs and ripping most of the skin and muscle off. The giant retreated into the cave and the soldiers decided that the best thing to do was head back to the village and report to the rest of their unit. Clearly this was more than a few Taliban militants. Even with that gaping wound, the giant was too terrifying for the marines to willingly walk into its territory. So they headed back and reported to their CO. Of course, their boss didn't believe them and demanded to see proof. So that night, they drove him out to the cave and showed him some of the shredded flesh that had been blown off by the grenade launcher. From there, the report went up the chain and nobody knows what was done about this creature. I wish he would have told me more and maybe you guys can help me find an answer. From what I've managed to find on my own, accounts like this are not uncommon in that part of the Middle East. Of course, since all of these reports were word of mouth stories, I don't know how factual they are, or if they're being exaggerated. If anyone out there knows what this thing could have been, let me know. About a year ago, I was out back with my family. It was around 8 and the sun was setting. We lived in a farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. The closest neighbor was far away. Something down the field kept catching my eye but I ignored it at first. My sister saw it too and kept looking out towards the trees. She was getting freaked out about it. My mom said to go investigate so me and my sister started to walk across the field towards the tree line. Big mistake. It's hard for me to describe. This was the most terrifying thing that has ever happened to me. 
I didn't see it at first, and I didn't understand why my sister was so scared, until we were about a hundred yards away when I saw this creature. Tall, probably eight or nine feet tall, white, humanoid with an elongated head and no face. It had long arms and peeked around the trees. We stopped in our tracks. We couldn't tell what it was. It took a few steps further out of the trees and swayed back and forth at me like a praying mantis. Me and my sister ran, screaming back to the house, where my mom stood, jaw dropped. She saw it too. I had never been so scared in my life. We grabbed the binoculars and watched this terrifying creature peek in and out of the tree line, spying on us. My grandma thought we all had a wild imagination. The sun was almost gone now and it was getting really dark, and the darker it got, the more it moved, back and forth along the trees. It was terrifying, so we went in for the night and locked everything up tight. I couldn't sleep at all that night. I was hearing scratches on the roof, and at one point, a very loud bang and various noises coming from the barn. I was very afraid that I would wake up to my animals missing. The next morning, my grandma asked if we had heard the loud bang outside that night. She ended up taking my grandpa with her on her morning walk. I have no idea what it was and it haunts me to this day. This is long, but everything pertains to what happened and possibly why it happened. So this happened many, many decades ago, back in the early to mid 80s before cell phones and internet. I have no way to prove this to anyone, but I will say that even at my age, I still have nightmares about this encounter. At 13 years old, I ended up going to live with my mother after being raised most of my life by my grandmother. Her health was failing, and I think she was protecting me from what was coming, her death. My mother and stepfather lived in a trailer park located in a small town. I grew up 40 minutes from this town and never knew it existed until my mother took me to live with her. There was only maybe 80 trailers in this whole place. It wasn't huge and butted up next to the local canal. I was one of only six kids in the park, so I had very few options for friends. One friend, Jeff, lived behind our section, and my other friend Melissa and her family lived at the very end straight down from where I was located. The place was like a lowercase h. So I met Jeff, who was just a few months younger than me, and we hit it off. I am female, by the way. We rode bikes when exploring. He was fairly new to the area as well and he was a good guy, smart and funny. Well, there was a trailer just up from the tip of the H, which also was the opening in the chain link fence to reach the canal, so we passed by it all the time when we would go to the canal to swim or just go walk. When I say red, I mean think like old farmhouse barn red. It was long and had a whole section built on it, making it go from a single wide to a double wide trailer. Well, as far as Jeff and I knew, no one lived there. It was empty, and the older lady who lived next to it said it belonged to a man who lived in the Bay Area. I live in California. Which, even to a couple of dumbass kids, seemed odd. The Bay Area was easily two to three hours away from us. So, no surprise when the idiot patrol decides, oh hey, let's go inside and check it out. Yes, we were stupid, but we did it anyways in broad daylight. The front door was a large sliding glass door, and I mean large by any standard. We waltzed right into the enclosed porch. We should have walked right back out, but as I said, we were stupid. For some reason, Jeff and I stopped to look at amputated bird feet. Really big bird feet. Not chicken or even turkey, they were far bigger and the claws more predatory in nature. We turned to the front door and it too was unlocked. Okay, so two dumbass 13 year olds and an open door invitation we walk right on in. Note, the place was nice as hell inside, and I mean nice, as in it looked like whoever lived there just went to the store and would be back any moment. So, to cut this down some, Jeff and I did an urban explorer thing. This place had power, running water, and the fridge was stocked, yet no one had been in here in over five years. We know because we asked the older lady who had a key to the place, and there was never a car parked out there. So while the front room and one bedroom up front looked lived in, we of course headed for the back, all the while trying to figure out where the door to the added on full length room was, because we were nosy little shits and wanted answers to lame questions. 
We found it, in a second bedroom that looked like something out of a new age horror movie slash porno. Ratty, disgusting mattress on the floor, Polaroids all over the place, at least a hundred plus, and a cut out doorway to a pitch black windowless room that ran the length of the trailer from just behind the enclosed porch. It had one dresser, about chest high, to a couple of dumb kids, and that's where Jeff was with his back to the black hole. I, on the other hand, was curious about the Polaroids laying around and started looking through them. I wished to hell I hadn't because I can never unsee what was in those. I won't go into detail, but they were taken in that room, and the girl in those photos was dead. When it dawned on my innocent mind what I was seeing, I dropped the photos like they burned and turned to my friend who was saying something to me, but I don't know what, but he was cut off by the most hideous evil laugh I have ever heard in my life to date. Since we were both looking at each other, we knew we didn't make the sound we heard and we froze like terrified puppies, until I saw a large, and I mean large hand, reach out of the darkness of the hole for Jeff's head. I have never screamed so loud in my life as I did then, and I shoved Jeff, and we were screaming and running as we cleared the trailer like our asses were on fire and literally leaped from the porch. We didn't even shut the doors. The old lady next door scolded us, and we booked it. Jeff went to his trailer, and I went to mine like a whipped puppy. It was the middle of June, and I shook like I was inside a deep freezer. If that wasn't scary enough, it gets freakier. My friend Jeff lived with his mom and dad and two little sisters. I want to say the girls were about four or five and cute as buttons. So two days later, I finally get the guys to go around the roadway. I had to come into proximity to the red trailer to go see Jeff and maybe talk about what had happened. I get to Jeff's and the trailer, two doors down from my mom's oldest friend, was empty, as in the entire family had moved out. I asked my mother's friend, who I called Grandma May, and she said they threw everything in their van and left the night Jeff and I went to the trailer. I was shocked because just a few days before, his mom had been talking about getting Jeff enrolled at the same middle school I attended, so why leave so abruptly? I talked to my mom, but she just shrugged it off and went back to her drinking. My mom was an alcoholic, she usually cracked her first beer by 9.30am and didn't go to bed until there was no beer left in the fridge. What's even scarier is about two weeks later, no one remembered Jeff or his family except me, and Jeff had been to my trailer to meet my mom and stepdad. Let me also clarify that no one believed me about the photos. I always regretted not taking the ones I had been holding with me. So jump ahead and I started hanging out with Melissa and her family. She was a year younger than me, and I was 14 at the time. She had two older sisters, Terry and Stephanie, both older girls were amazing and treated me like another sister. Her parents were simply amazing and Melissa was a sweet, gentle girl who never had a mean thought in her life. But of course, to go there, I had to pass by the red trailer. Every time I felt something watching me, which was pretty spooky given there was no windows on that side. It was the added on section to widen the trailer, but they didn't add windows. So another summer evening and I finally get the guts to tell Melissa's sister, Stephanie, about the trailer. So she decides, hey, let's go check it out, and I was like, uh, no. I don't remember after all these years why, but I finally caved in and said fine, but not past the living room. We braved the place in daylight, and that time I paid more attention to the bedroom to the right of the living room. It had a freaking queen-size waterbed, working lamps, and a full-size confederate flag on the wall. I don't know why, but of all the things, that flag gave me shivers. Now, Stephanie reached out to feel the waterbed, and it was warm, as in the heater for the water was active. She took my arm and we hoofed it out of there quickly. No, she and her family did not vanish, thankfully, but we left it at that, and I went on to get other friends and my first boyfriend, and we all spent a lot of time on the canal which faced the only side of the red trailer that had windows, and several times I swore I saw someone peering out at me. I'm skipping a few pieces because the story is so long already and I want to get to the part that has genuinely haunted me for life. So at 15, I spent almost as much time at Melissa's as I did at home, and by that point I had opened up about the red trailer and what I had seen, heard, felt, and feared. For some reason, I wore a blue dress with a flouncy skirt down to Melissa's. I can't remember why we got dressed up now, but back then it was cool and I walked down about 1pm and we sat around chatting and doing teenage stuff. Now I had no intention of staying until dark but somehow before I realized it, 
it was well after dark outside. Now remember, this was the 80s, so we didn't have street lamps every two feet. In fact, the only one we had was at the spot where the road curved into the hump of the H, which just happened to be across from the red trailer. For some reason, I was unreasonably terrified to walk back by that trailer alone and told Terry. She was almost 18 and decided that she would walk past it with me to make sure I was closer to home before she headed back. Feeling relieved, we headed out. It wasn't that far from their place to mine, and I could see my porch from their place and vice versa in the daylight. So we pass the red trailer and come adjacent to the trailer directly across from it. I cannot even begin to explain the numbing, skin-crawling feeling that raked me from head to toe, but I literally froze in the middle of the road facing towards my home. It felt like I was forced to turn around and face the extremely tall and wide sliding glass doors to the trailer in terror. I wished to the gods that I hadn't. All of us girls turned around and standing in the glass doorway was the biggest, scariest nightmare I have ever seen. And I have faced some live human monsters. I looked into the face of evil and it stared back at me. The first thing that struck me was how fucking tall it was. It was ducking down to glare at us. Its lips pulled back off fangs that were glistening and damp from saliva. Its eyes were vivid yellow and the size of a closed fist, and its long claws made distinct tapping noises against the glass door it was framed in. I tunnel visioned on that giant furry bipedal monster because to this day the only thing I can best describe it as is a werewolf. It looked just like a werewolf, complete with rear articulated legs. I vaguely remember hearing one of the others whisper, what the fuck is that? And someone else whimpered. Then I blink and my friends are gone, they're almost back at Melissa's place and I'm standing there under the lamp frozen, but like watching a car wreck I had to look back at the thing and it was smirking at me. I'll never forget that huge claw hand tilting as it used one finger to beckon me to it. To this day I don't know how I broke the terror that held me in place facing that thing, but I shook my head and turned running like my life depended on it, and most likely it did, if not my life, then maybe my soul. I got home and my mom didn't even notice my fear, and my stepdad was in bed. He had to be at work early. I wanted to tell my mom, but she was too drunk, and I was too emotionally shaken to deal with her drunken fits. So I went to my room and changed, then crawled into bed shivering. The next day, once the sun was bright and shiny, I scurried down to my friend's place and asked her about it. She and her sisters had no memory of walking me past the trailer or seeing the thing in the sliding glass doors. They asked me if I was drinking or smoking pot, which I had not taken up smoking pot yet, that came later that year, and I hadn't been drinking the day before, so I let it go and just kept it to myself. Only a few people close to me know about this story, and one of them actually went back to the park with me as an adult. The trailer was gone, but I didn't have to tell him where it was. He felt it. I was originally going to visit an old couple I owed my sanity to, but the feeling of dread and skin crawling was too much for us, so we left the trailer park. To this day, if by some fluke we drive through that town in the trailer park, I get nauseous and the shakes as if it's still there watching me. I have tried to find out about any unsolved deaths in that time frame, but I can't find anything. And yes, it could have been a joke with the Polaroid photos, but that film was expensive back then and there were hundreds of photos of this girl ending with her being eviscerated on that mattress or one like it. I sadly never knew Jeff's last name so I can't search for him and have long since lost contact with Melissa and her family nor do I remember her name. If anyone has any ideas please toss them out. This has haunted me since I was 15 and I'm 48 now. I know I shouldn't have trespassed and I did bring that onto myself but what the fuck was it? A werewolf? A demon? What? This all occurred around the time I was in high school, and I honestly haven't seen anything with as much reoccurrence as back then. But when I was in high school, I shared my room with my younger brother. The upstairs was a three-room portion of the old farmhouse we lived in. The main landing that was my parents' library my sister's room on one side and my brother's and mine on the opposite. Our room was laid out that we both had twin beds and mine was next to the window which had a seat and storage area under it. And then my brother's was perpendicular to my bed but across the room against the wall. We didn't have any other furniture in the room and the room was kept relatively clean. 
Now most of these occurrences happened in the middle of the night and they never gave me any sort of emotional response other than the initial reaction for the first one. I would wake up with the feeling of being watched. We were on the second story, so there's no way anyone was looking in my window. There are no pets inside, so I can't chalk it up to that. I roll over and there's a large figure standing over me. Now, I'm a six foot four guy, and this seemed taller than I was, so I don't know exactly who it could have been. They made no sound, no sudden movement, just stared at me for several moments before they would sit on the window ledge. This happened more times than I can count, but each time the figure seemed to change. But they always stayed a hulking frame of a man. I never saw any hair or distinctive features to apply a gender, but the shoulders and height make me think male. The figures would never interact beyond leaning in, shifting a little when I awoke, or act as though they were straightening back up from leaning in towards me. I never asked any sort of question or physically interacted with them. They were just there. Now I've had a pretty strong sixth sense most of my life, and my mother has told me stories of when I was a kid and talking about my friends who are usually some old person or talking to empty spaces. So I've never been able to determine if they were some sort of spirit or not. But it wasn't until my college days that I heard about shadow men and looked into it, and that's more what I believe I encountered. My other encounter that has had a lasting impact on me was when I was staying at a friend's home after a night of playing games in college. I fell asleep in his sister's bed as she was out of town and his parents had gone to sleep hours ago. It was probably around 4 in the morning. It was a basement so it was hard to tell, but the light from his monitor was still on. I awake to the door to her room opening. It was a door with several window frames in it and I see a large, and I mean bend at the waist large figure enter the room. The doorway looks like the entrance to a kid's playhouse with the way this figure filled it. No one in the house is that big mind you, and the room instantly took on a dark feeling. As mentioned, I'd had run-ins in the past with figures like this, but none of them made the hair on my body stand like this. It's standing right now even as I write this. The figure just stood there as they have always done, didn't move, didn't make a sound, didn't try to initiate any form of communication, nothing. I just sat there entranced as this massive shadow engulfed the room. I don't remember falling back asleep or passing out. I just remember staring at the figure and then waking up. Now I don't know if they were the same group of figures, I'd never felt I was going to be harmed, but the ominous pressure from the last one was definitely a different experience from all the others I had had. Anyways, thoughts and hypotheses are welcomed. When I was 13, my mom decided I would be going to military boarding school. It was located north of Mexico in a place called Durango. Durango is known because it's home to many creepy things. Drug cartels, the zone of silence, ghost towns, UFO sightings, etc. I was at that school for around six years. And one day, a friend invited me and other students to go to his hometown to have some tacos with his dad, a well-known rancher. When we arrived to the town, we were at his house having some drinks and eventually he decided it was time to go somewhere else. We hopped into his pickup truck and he began driving right when the sun was setting. After about half an hour, everything was dark and he had to turn on the headlights. I was in the front seat with my friend and we've just arrived to the place. He slowed down the car and we could just hear the nocturnal wildlife and some scratches on the car from branches or plants. The headlights allowed us to see just enough to distinguish shapes. He stopped the car right in front of a little lake, lagoon, pond, I don't know. We could see some bushes and trees around the water and a few meters in front of the right headlight we could see what we thought was a rock. The guys started unloading the truck while they joked around. My friend and I were still in the front seat smoking or something. All of a sudden, he just froze and said, Did you see that? While he pointed to the rock in front of the car with the tip of the cigarette. That there just moved. Since I've always wanted to see a cryptid or something, I remained still. We were both looking at this rock when all of a sudden it turns its head around to face us with what I thought was like a golem face. Big round yellow eyes, arched back. 
I turned to my friend. He grabbed his gun and quickly got out of the car, fired two shots to the sky. All this while people are still unloading the truck and making a fire for the grill and such. I heard a few screams. I saw how this creature looked up to the sky, turned around and hopped to the water. Right after that, everyone began asking what happened. My friend told us that it was actually a common sight. He explained that his father and grandfather often saw the creature when they were hunting. He said they called it Ombre Rana, or Frogman. Just a few of the guys saw the thing. We still had the tacos and everything. We were a little creeped out, but we assumed that the Frogman was probably more scared of us than we were of him. I saw many terrifying, creepy and odd things in Durango, but the Frogman takes the cake. This experience happened about four years ago. To this day, I keep wondering what happened to come across my sister. It was winter time here in the suburbs of Northern Virginia. I live with my family in a neighborhood not far from Washington DC, so it's not to say we're in the middle of nowhere, although our home is very close to a few decently large wooded parks. One night, I was at my then girlfriend's place up near the city. I got a phone call from my sister around 7 p.m which in wintertime makes it pretty much nighttime here. I didn't think anything of it. Usually she calls me for random things she needs my insight on. A bit about my sister. Ever since she was little, she loved horror movies. Growing up with her, I can tell you firsthand that she isn't easily scared. She loves the paranormal. Alright, so back to the call. I picked up the phone and first thing I realized was her voice was breaking up. She was sobbing and could barely talk clearly. Instantly, my mind started rushing with horrible thoughts about what could have happened. She kept telling me to come home as soon as possible. I asked her why, is everything okay? She wouldn't say. She just kept asking me to come home. Obviously, I got in my car and rushed home. The neighborhood is very dim. There aren't many lights, only a few solar powered garden lamps from surrounding homes. As soon as I got home, I ran inside, asked her again what happened, and she finally started explaining. About half an hour before she called me, she went outside to grab a few things from her car. Again, it was dark out, but when the car is unlocked, the headlights turn on. When she opened the door to the car, the light was shining from the driveway to the roof of the garage. She noticed it first from inside the car, a short, bipedal human looking thing standing on two jet black muscular legs. At first she said she thought it was a raccoon, but this would have been obvious to her. But this thing, it scared her to the point of crying. While she was in the car, her view was obstructed from the rest of the creature, which was crouching, and from what she described, it was scratching at something on the roof. Could it have been trying to get in? Maybe, but she wasn't going to stick around to find out. She got out of the car, pretending to not have spotted it. This thing, it acted in a seemingly intelligent way. She thought, maybe if I act as if I didn't see it, it'll just stay up there and not try to attack or anything. But as she walked behind the car, she heard it stand upright. Startled, she looked directly at it. The whole description she told me was as follows. Jet black, smooth dolphin skin-like legs and arms. Five digit hands and no claws. Dreaded looking very dirty fur or hair, covering its head and body. The face is what was disturbing. The face had two shining yellow eyes that glowed from the car's headlights. No nose, just two slits, and a very wide mouth with no lips. She took off when she made eye contact. As soon as she was indoors, she called 911 and an officer was dispatched to our house. He looked around back and tried to see if there was any damage or sign of someone climbing the roof. No footprints, no damage. It was all in place. The officer just told us to lock the doors and windows and left. It's not like my sister to be terrified to the point of calling the police. Whatever this thing was though, I can only imagine what it was actually like to witness something like that in real life. To this day, both me and her get extremely uneasy arriving home after dark.